President Buhari supports sanctions against South Sudan for circumventing peace agreement. The respect of all the African Union Peace and Security Council decisions and abide by all the United Nations Security Council resolution on South Sudan. He said lasting peace and stability can also be achieved if the leaders agree to widen the political base and open up participation in governance to all actors and bona fide citizens of the country. The president expressed optimism that with greater and more manifest political stability in South Sudan, all means for developing the country by way of economic assistance and financial support will be found. Available records show that about 590 people are living with TB in the country. Looking for the possible ways to address the challenge, NASA stated the UN high-level meeting of Stop TB Partnership. The dialogue brought together experts in all sectors of development from both private and public institutions across the globe. In her presentation, the wife of the president reaffirmed her commitment to sustain the temple in her advocacy towards bringing to an end tuberculosis not only in Nigeria but in the world. The UN Secretary General Ban Ki moon, in his message to the meeting and other stakeholders, including the Minister of Health, Professor Isaac Adewole, emphasized the need for serious engagement of all stakeholders to end. On the sidelines of the United Nations General Assembly me, uh, conference going on in New York. Sidhar's correspondent Adam Sambo again reports. This is the second formal interaction between the U.S. President Barack Obama and his Nigerian counterpart Muhammad Buhari. And just like in the first meeting in Washington, D.C. last year, President Obama acknowledged the enormous integrity of President Muhammad Buhari and the exemplary leadership he provides to Nigeria's rebuilding process. This, he said, is responsible for the progress being achieved, particularly in the fight against terrorism and insurgency. Because of uh, President Buhari's leadership, uh, he has been able to refocus uh, the Nigerian military. We are coordinating carefully. Uh, and we discussed here today uh, additional ways that we can make uh, further progress, not only in destroying uh, this branch of ISIL, but also to make sure that the people in this region are able to recover from uh, the devastation uh, of Boko Haram's occupation. Uh, that includes making sure that humanitarian is get, aid is getting in. Uh, there is real danger. Uh, of famine and hardship in these areas because farmers were not able to grow crops and uh, engage in, in traditional agricultural practices. Boko Haram was holding uh, clearly 14 out of 774 local governments and they declared a caliphate. Now they are not holding a single one in the south uh, South, the militants uh, there we are being helped again with intelligence and advice and the training, and uh, we believe it will be okay. Uh, diversifying the economy, we made the mistake of being a mono economy. <coughs> Until now, we found out um, uh, putting the bills on food importation uh, would be difficult, so we went into agriculture. We are, we are very grateful for the advice we have been receiving. So um, I don't think Nigeria can thank the United States enough. The Nigerian leader also held a bilateral meeting behind closed doors with President François Hollande of France, where similar issues of security, economy, and the fight against corruption dominated discussions. From New York, Adamu Sambu, NTA News. Back home, Vice President Yemiya Shivajo says partnership with the internet structured deliveries that work in Nigeria and for Nigerians. Ben Melo is head office of DFID in Nigeria. And then he suggested that something had, had gone wrong and I know that there is a lot of commitment from this government to try and put right some of these things and we are already seeing some good developments such as the, the railways going down to, to Lagos from the north. As observed by the officials of NIAV, the challenges are many for the country and so are the opportunities. There is a wealth of economic opportunity. 
country is in at the appropriate time to stimulate the economy, engage in meaningful dialogues with those aggrieved in the Niger Delta, as well as consider immediate release of funds to ensure implementation of the budget for the near short term. While commenting on the speech, some of the senators emphasized the need for all stakeholders to fast-track measures that will help attain desired goals. So many components of real management and real construction can be used in ensuring that we get out of these economic problems that we have. The only way democracy can be defended is if it is seen by the people to be the best form of government. And the only way it can become the best form of government is if the sufferings of the masses is reduced. Uh, more than 50,000 people are turned, or graduates are turned out yearly, you know, but unfortunately we cannot find job. So I think this is an issue uh, that we should also tackle head on. Outside plenary, the Senate says it has taken some measures aimed at improving processes of legislation. Senate leader Mohamed Ali Ndume enumerates the measures at a press briefing. We are going to dedicate Tuesdays for motions, then Wednesdays of the House of Representatives, Al Hassan Adodogua. Representative Abdul Mumin Jibrin also advised the presiding officers of the House of Representatives he accused in the budget pardon allegation to step aside for a step aside for a thorough investigation. Uh, the decision was taken. All members of the of the caucus agreed that uh, he should step down as the whip, irrespective of this particular allegation. Reacting to the press briefing, the chief whip of the House of Representatives, Al Hassan Adodogwa, has this to say of which I was there in attendance like every other leader, I want to tell you clearly, no mention whatsoever was made in respect of my position as the chief whip of the House of Representatives, and I enjoy tremendous confidence of the members of the Northwest Zone. But no one can just call a respected public officer to resign in the face of an unfounded allegation like this one. The speaker will not resign. Members are behind him solidly. The chief whip, however, retreated the commitment of the House of Representatives in finding lasting solution to the current economic recession in the country. From the National Assembly, Ignatius Nkwo, NTN News. To the judiciary now, the nomination of Yahya Bello to replace Prince Abubakar Audu, who died during the Kogi State governorship election in 2015, is in order. So says the Supreme Court of Nigeria in its verdict on the appeal filed to contest the governorship of Kogi State. Judiciary correspondent Femi Okewo reports. The Supreme Court has dismissed the four appeals filed to contest the and for now has resolved the very uncommon occurrence concerning the Kogi State governorship election. But there are still many Nigerians who will suggest that more intervention be done through legislation in order to avert a reoccurrence. From the Supreme Court, Femi Okewu, NTN News. Judicial officers have been advised to be apolitical and independent in all matters put before them for adjudication. Chief Justice of Nigeria, Justice Mahmoud Mohammed, gave the advice at the opening of the 32nd Federal High Court Judges Conference in Abuja. Dele Atubi reports. Justice Mahmoud Mohammed said a situation where courts of coordinates jurisdiction sit on appeal from same court of other divisions should stop immediately. The Chief Justice of Nigeria again expressed concern about conflicting judgment from courts of coordinates jurisdiction and advised officers of the Temple of Justice to abide by the court's civil procedural rules. He pointed out that the Administration of Criminal Justice Act 2015 presents judges with clearly defined guidelines for the conduct of criminal trials within the courts. The Chief Justice of Nigeria also admonished judicial officers to adhere strictly to the various practice directions and judicial precedent in the administration of justice. In reality, the deviant departure from established norms by certain judges is increasing. This situation not only portrays the justice system as being a confused institution, but at worst, we are looked upon as morally bankrupt. We are going to get to that safe port with all of us, and a new Nigeria will be born at a time 
a Nigeria of prosperity, a Nigeria where the peace will reign. Worthy of note, the minister said, is the takeoff of the social intervention programs that is targeted at the most vulnerable members of the society. President of the National Council of Women's Societies, Gloria Shoda, on her part, commended the federal government for its determination to rebuild Nigeria, saying the process might be slow and the citizens going through some hard times. She said the NCWS is optimistic that the President Muhammad Buhari-led administration will reshape Nigeria for good. On the Change Begins With Me campaign, Gloria Shoda told the minister that the NCWS, as the umbrella body of all women's societies, will mobilize in support of the Change Begins With Me campaign. NCWS gladly will get, gladly partner with the ministry and the National Orientation Agency to drive any campaign that is positive to women and the youth, especially the campaign Change Begins With Me. In Abuja, Antina Forsen, NTA News. The Nigerian Navy says its personnel have repelled an attempted hijack of a marine tanker, MT Hanze Kochi, by suspected sea robbers. A statement by the Director of Information, Nigerian Navy, Commodore Christian Odogu Ezekobi, says the attackers made efforts to board the vessel en route Lagos from Port Harcourt, 15 nautical miles off Bayelsa State, on the 16th of September, but were heavily engaged and overpowered in the gun duel by naval personnel. The statement further said the Nigerian Navy patrol team deployed by FOB Boni in River State has arrested marine vessel MV Pere Ipamo carrying about 500 metric tons of diesel at Shell Slot Jetty in Boni for alleged involvement in illegal bunkering activities. Meanwhile, the NNS Delta Patrol is reported to have destroyed two illegal refinery sites in Lakpaje and Ubeje Creeks in Wari South local government area of Delta State, with about 18,000 liters of suspected stolen crude and 15,000 liters of suspected illegally refined diesel all destroyed. The Inspector General of Police, Ibrahim Idris, says the Nigeria Police Force is ready to collaborate with stakeholders in livestock management towards curtailing the menace of cattle rustling in the country. Ibrahim Idris stated these at a meeting with interest groups at the force headquarters, Abuja. Edina Justice has the report. Cattle rustling is said to have assumed a national menace as it has led to the destruction of many lives and property. Curtailing it requires a collaboration of players along the chain of cattle movement from rural loading bay through the animal control post and to its final destination market. The IGP Ibrahim Idris who decried the negative effect, said there was a need for collaboration. As stakeholders in the chain of cattle movement, with the application of necessary laws, which are meant to checkmate the illegal movement of animals, we can drastically reduce the incidences of animal thefts and cattle rustling in various parts of the country. So Professor Garba Sarubuti presented a lead paper on cattle rustling, curses, curse, and control. He noted that brute force alone could not curb rustling, but there must be a deliberate implementation of policies. What will be of immediate help is the implementation of the Animal Disease Control Act laws of the Federation of Nigeria 2004. It has made provision for the control of trade animals. The meeting had its members drawn from Meiti Ala Cattle Breeders Association, National Association of Road Transport Owners, NATO, Cattle Sellers Association and Security Operatives. A community is expected at the end of the meeting. Edina Justice, NCA News. You can watch this news live online via the NTA mobile app, which you can download on your Android device and at the Google Play Store or at the Apple Store if you use devices with iOS. Still to come, hope rises for the PDP reconciliation as Sharif and McCarthy groups meet. Details after the break. When has it reached this? Much less this. And this. And this.
And this. Help reclaim our commonwealth. Lend your support to the fight against corruption for a better Nigeria. Guys, TGIF! Now the real turn up is online. Thank Glow, it's Friday. Now you can enjoy 3 gigabytes for 500 Naira plus 100 Naira free talk time every weekend with the Glow Weekend Plan. Dial star triple seven hash. Hello, Steve. Phone again now. The largest data network, Glow, Grandmasters of Data. The family of Okon has been taken hostage by an evil looking creature. The thing just show for night. Yeah, be where, where? Come in. Sister, like oh, my sister, I was there what was happening in the news. We were suddenly brought back your family. You <laughs> 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 think he can free them? No way! Jump away! When I'm at 10.40 up here, my lady, I run for cover. I'm at 10. Thank you. I'm at them fourth, I get some gel capsules, tablets for adults, and suspension for bikini. I'm at them that does not eat somebody and are very easy to use. There you are. Remember, I'm at them fourth, I get scratch pin to confirm the original, and I get some gel capsules. I'm at them. Say no to malaria, yes to life. Bayes University Abuja offers world-class education, uninterrupted academic session, and promising degrees for a sustainable job. Bayes University Abuja is affordable and delivers quality with experienced international staff, superb facilities, overseas external examiners, and a serene academic atmosphere. We offer quality and affordable education, and students are within easy reach of their parents here at Bayes University Abuja. So learn to live at Bayes University for a brighter future. For more information, visit our website at www.bayesuniversity.edu.ng or call 081-3376-9657 or 081-3376-9658. Bayes University, Abuja. Learn to live. The National Pension Commission of Nigeria, PENCOM, announces the 2016 edition of the World Pension Summit Africa Special. By the next time we sit here today, we would have developed sustainable pension principles for investment. Nigeria needs to weather this difficult external short-term environment. The Summit for All Africa Pension Professionals presents and debates about specific African pension innovations, key scenarios, and scheme development. The theme for this year's summit is Pension Innovations, the Africa Perspective. Date is 27 and 28 September 2016. Venue is Transcop Hilton Hotel, Abuja. Visit www.warpensionsummitafricaspecial.com to register. Thank you for remaining with NTN Network News. It appears the People's Democratic Party is making a headway in the reconciliation efforts between its major factions of Senator Ali Modu Sharif and the Senator Ahmed Magarfi Katika Committee. Correspondent Abdullah Hagarba Bednankud reports that officials of the two factions jointly briefed the media on developments. After months of back and forth to reconcile between the Katika Committee and Senator Sharif faction, the two groups agreed for the first time to sheath their sword. The media briefing came after a closed door meeting Tuesday morning between the two principal characters and agreed thus. Consult widely with all our all relevant organs of the party. B. Set up a joint committee that will carry out a holistic reconciliation of all aggrieved segments of our, part, of our party across the country and in diaspora. C. 
Peru's <coughs> pursue the, the vision of the founding fathers of our great party, the PDP. So as we speak today, the PDP is back as one family. The statement, however, emphasized that the reconciliation efforts will go without prejudice to all outstanding matters in court. In Abuja, Abdullahi Garaba Perunokudu, NTA News. Cultural education has been observed as key to overcoming cultural illiteracy in Nigeria. This came up when the Director General of the NTA, Yakubu Ibn Mohammed, held talks with the Director General National Council for Arts and Culture, Dayo Keshi, in Abuja. Uplanda Krok reports. The NTA and the National Council for Arts and Culture have similar mandates of projecting the image of Nigeria through information and education on the nation's rich cultural heritage. The meeting of the chief executives of the two organizations is to better harness the potentials of the creative industry towards diversifying the nation's economy. Culture cannot be propagated without the requisite education. Mm -hmm. So we can work at something in terms of uh, cultural education for Nigerians. If we join hands together, you know, we can read Nigeria of, you know, of this uh, degree of cultural illiteracy. With the crash in crude oil prices globally, the executives agree that arts and culture are potential gold mines that can be tapped through the annual National Festival of Arts and Culture, NAFEST. There is a strong gold mine we, are, we haven't yet tapped in the cultural and creative industries of Nigeria. I do hope that I'll have strong partners as yours to join in taking this seriously and moving Nigeria to the world in a very positive way. We. The festival, which started in 1970, has been a platform for unity, integration, and reconciliation. This year's edition of the festival is scheduled to hold in Uyo, Akwaibom State, from the 2nd to the 9th of October, with the theme, Exploring the Gold Mine Inherent in Our Creative Industries. Muplang Dakok, NTA News. As debates continue on the best way to address the current economic recession, the Revenue Mobilization, Allocation and Fiscal Commission has advised the federal government not to dispose of what it is referred to as its crown jewels that generate revenue. In a statement, the acting chairman of the commission, Shatima Umar Abba Ghana, uh, argued that disposing such assets may not guarantee a healthy federation account over a long term citing the 2013 audit and financial report of the Nigeria Extractive Industry and Transparency Initiative, NITI, for Nigeria's oil and gas industry, the chairman disclosed that almost $13 billion was received by NNPC from the Nigeria Liquidified, Liquidified Natural Gas Company over an eight-year period without remitting it to the Federation account. The chairman also noted that the Nigeria Liquidified Natural Gas Company paid over $1 billion as dividend for 2013. He therefore argued that assets such as the NLNG and other strategic national resources should not be sold to meet short-term financial obligation. The Revenue Mobilization Allocation Fiscal Commission advised, therefore, that instead of selling such vital assets which generate funds for the Federation, wealthy Nigerians should be encouraged to set up their own liquefied natural gas projects since Nigeria has an expansive and one of the best gas reserves in the world. We we'll now join Jennifer in our Lagos Network Center for more on NTA Network News. Hello Jennifer. Thank you, Kudu. Good evening and a warm welcome to Lagos. Our first story is on the EU ECOWAS Trade Agreement Review. Now, a consultative forum on the economic partnership agreement between the European Union and ECOWAS community has held in Lagos. Thekla Wilkie reports that the meeting was to review the implication of the proposed trade policy on the Nigerian economy. In view of the current economic challenges plaguing the Nigerian economy, the federal government through the Minister of State Federal Ministry of Industry, Trade and Investment says strategic steps are being taken by the federal government to initiate new economic policies that will revamp the economy. 
The government is also reviewing previous trade agreements and proposals of the past administration to forestall future reoccurrence of the current economic downturn. This economic policy direction of the government has necessitated a review of the Economic Partnership Agreement, EPA, between the European Union and the ECOWAS community, which Nigeria is a major stakeholder. The EPA is too critical to be concluded and signed in a hurry. Though most of the countries under the ECOWAS umbrella have signed up for the EPA trade agreement, the Nigerian government says there is a need to reflect on the pros and cons of the agreement and engage due diligence before making a final decision. And in fact, the government has a responsibility to protect its, its citizens, first and foremost. There has to be Nigeria before there's ECOWAS. We believe that this would affect our industrialization. Most of the other uh, ECOWAS countries do not indulge in as much uh, uh, manufacturing as uh, Nigeria does. The minister maintained that the federal government economic policy direction is geared towards domestic growth, especially in the area of industrialization, employment generation, and modernization of the Nigerian economy. In Lagos, Fekla Wilki, NTN News. 151 young Nigerians 151 young Nigerians from across Africa are undergoing a five-week intensive training program on leadership and entrepreneurship, courtesy the Yali Regional Leadership Center at the Administrative Staff, Staff College of Nigeria, ASCON. The flag off of the program was declared by the di director of the college. Tunde Saiki reports. The five-week intensive training on leadership, mentoring, networking, and entrepreneurship is aimed at exposing the participants to the dynamics of effective leadership in any given society in the continent. The over 150 participants will undergo training in public policy and management, civil society leadership and entrepreneurship. If these people get this opportunity at this age, that will help them to bring the change that we want. The Acting Director General of the Administrative Staff College of Nigeria, ASCON, Mrs. Cecilia Gaya, says the college is poised to provide African leaders with technical, attitudinal, and leadership skills that will enhance their capacity in the areas of public policy management. After the class work, room work, there's going to be a period of mentorship, which means that they will be connected to people who have succeeded in the various areas of their lives. Some of the participants expressed determination to make an impact in their countries after the training. Wherever we find ourselves, we put up to that challenge and challenge ourselves to expand and exceed our limitations. We will inspire other youths, kids, to believe that farming is actually a noble profession. The Young African Leaders Initiative is the brainchild of President Barack Obama of the United States. Its objective is to provide high-quality training, mentoring and networking support to a greater number of young leaders in Lagos. Tunde Saiki, NTA News. If you're just joining us, you're watching the NTA Network News from the Lagos Network Center. We have more reports ahead on the news from Abuja when we return from this commercial break. Stay tuned. Nigerians. Suicide bombers are not spirits. They are not ghosts. They are human beings like you and me. They live amongst us. They are your neighbors. They are your friends today but terrorists tomorrow. So you must know your neighbor now. Security begins with you and me. Know your neighbor. Be vigilant. Be security conscious. Report suspicious persons, objects, and movements to the police and other security agencies. The security of our nation is a duty for you and me. If you see something, say something. Nigeria, unite against terrorism. This message is brought to you by the Federal Ministry of Information and Culture. This must be one of Mother Nature's greatest gifts. But there's something else it gives us. When we see such beauty, we want to share it with those we love. That's what LG wants you to see. Just what we see now through our technology. LG OLED TV. 
Introducing new Dettol multi-surface cleaner for a healthy home. Some cleaners don't kill germs. Others kill germs but don't clean properly. New Dettol multi-surface cleaner gives you 10 times better germ kill, 10 times better cleaning and all day freshness for a healthy home. Germs, oil and dirt can cause blemishes and uneven skin tone. You need Dettol Even Tone. It removes 99.9% .9 of germs and is formulated to remove excess oil and dirt, helping to reduce blemishes. New Dettol Even Tone. Discover the liquid freshness of Centerfresh chewing gum that you feel. And others too. Centerfresh. Trust the freshness. You're watching NTA Network News. The Central Bank of Nigeria Monetary Policy Committee rose from its two-day meeting to announce the retention of the benchmark interest rate at 14%. Contrary to expectations of the organized private sector for a possible reduction. The CBN governor, Godin Omefele, who announced the resolution of the Monetary Policy Committee, says it will not augur well for the economy to reduce the monetary policy rates at this time. Finance and economy correspondent Cliff Ayose reports. Nine out of the 12th member Monetary Policy Committee made for two days here. They had an overview of global and national developments and its implications on Nigeria's economy. With negative GDP growth and inflation rate at 17.6% in August and other factors. Many market interest rate, the committee argued, reflect the liquidity conditions in the country. About 1 trillion naira that was injected by the CBN into the economy or made available to the banks. Rather than loan this money to consumers, to agri manufacturing, and SMEs, like we said at the community, we found that those credits went to traders who used them in demanding for foreign exchange, which ended up putting pressure on the foreign exchange market. The committee believes that there will be a drop in prices of goods in the fourth quarter. Though non-oil sector contracted by 0.38%, agriculture, other services, Education, arts, entertainment, and information communication witnessed a measure of growth. However, shocks associated with energy shortages and price hikes and scarcity of foreign exchange apparently proved more damaging than expected, hence the need to return the status quo in monetary policy. The CBN governor who affirmed that the fiscal and monetary authorities are working together to reposition the economy also expressed the need for improved physical activities regular salary payments across the states and tax incentives as part of immediate measures to stimulate the economy. In Abuja, Cliff Ayose, NTA News. Reactions trail Monetary Policy Committee's decision to retain interest rate aimed at encouraging capital inflows. We have details on business news, including the summary of trading activities on the Nigeria stock, stock market with Chadala Mikie. Good evening and a warm welcome to Business News. The Central Bank of Nigeria has concluded its monetary policy meeting and has retained benchmark rates at 14%, stressing that the decision is because the APS Bank is no longer a dominant player in the foreign exchange market after floating the Naira in June. This decision, however, has not gone down well with some players in the sector. Reading the lips of um, the Central Bank Governor in recent times, talking about the economy getting out of the woods by the fourth quarter of this year, I expect monetary policy stance to complement um, the fiscal stimulus that the, the federal government has been talking about. Uh, so I expect a reduction in the monetary policy rate from the current 14 percent to say 12 percent. Uh, unfortunately, the banks are not doing much. When you look at the interest rate, uh, investors can't really access these funds. In fact, the banks have even stopped uh, giving up uh, loans because of the policies, uh, we can say maybe somersault or adjustment in CBN. And trading on the equities market closed today on a positive note as the all share index appreciated 
by 1.33%. That's the package at this time. I am Chia Zalameki. Network News continues. Don't go away. There was a slight improvement in collection of revenue for the month of August, increasing distributable revenue for the month of August by the Federation Account Allocation Committee meeting. Minister of Finance, Kemi Adeoshun, who is also chairman of Federation Account Allocation Committee, disclosed that 510 billion Naira was shared between the three tiers of government. She also said the distributable, the distributable revenue received a boost from the flexible exchange rate regime. Details with Lea Katumba Batunde. Compares to last month's total of 493 billion 828 million naira. That is a positive variance. Of Minister of Finance Kemia Dioshin, given a breakdown of figures collected in the month of August and distributed in this month's meeting. The meeting was earlier scheduled for Abiyokuta, the Ogun State Capital, to coincide with the retreat of the National Council of Finance and Economic Development, NACOFED, but rescheduled to see both sessions held simultaneously this Tuesday. The minister said the budget support fund for states is not captured in the distribution, but is largely available for states with lean resources to tap into. For the first three months, we did 50 billion a month and now it's reduced to 40 billion a month and the idea is really to tide the states over to support them in paying salaries because we recognize that really that's what keeps the economy uh, moving that's what stimulates the de demand and we really are um, so far quite um, satisfied with um, how the state governments have gone about meeting their obligations Chairman, Commissioners, Forum and Commissioner of Finance for Edo State, John Odigi, explained how states have been faring, especially with the present difficult times. Interestingly, the oil rich states are even worse off because the disruption of the, the pipelines affect them the most. A lot of us do not realize this. And I guess we we'll also use this avenue to appeal to the militants to please, please put a stop to this. Their people are worst hit. Statutory revenue, value added tax, petroleum profit tax, and the flexible exchange rate helped push up the revenues distributed for the month under review and the excess. For the avoidance of doubt, the authorized fee, school fees for Unity Colleges for the 2016 2017 academic year is now on the Ministry of Education's website www.education.gov.ng Up ahead, global tidbits, sports, and the weather prospects for Wednesday. Don't go away. Some say Africa's golden era is gone. A time when great African kings and queens culture. And the present administration is determined to go back to planning. Identify priorities beforehand. When money comes, it is applied to that purpose. And you can see the results. Yeah. We are determined to rehabilitate our country, uh, especially for our children and our grandchildren. News from the international scene. Galonke Kolaole is here with stories. Nigeria's record-breaking performance at the 2016 Paralympic Games has been described as a perfect example worthy of emulation, A sports remain a stronghold of para-athletes in the country. Nigeria's chef de mission to the Games, Chiyaka Oha, stated this while